Hello everyone. The topic of our today's class is Standard Ethernet. First, let us see the Ethernet evolution through four generations. Here we have four generations of the Ethernet. First is the Standard Ethernet, which has a um, maximum bandwidth of 10 Mbps. The next one is the first Fast Ethernet with 100 Mbps. Next is the Gigabit Ethernet, which has a bandwidth of 1 Gbps. And the fourth one is 10 Gigabit Ethernet with 10 Gbps bandwidth. The changes in the Ethernet, standard Ethernet opens the road to the evolution of the Ethernet to become compatible with other high data rate lens. First, let's see the bridge Ethernet. The bridge Ethernet, uh, this is the first step in the Ethernet evolution. Uh, that is, uh, the purpose of the bridges Ethernet um, has uh, two, two, two main purposes. The first is to raise the bandwidth and the second is to separate collision domains. Here in this picture, we have uh, two types of uh, the bridge Ethernet. Uh, that is, the first one doesn't have a, a bridge and the second one is a standard Ethernet with a bridge. In the first one, that is the unbridge uh, standard Ethernet, the total capacity, that is 10 Mbps, is shared among all the stations with a frame to send. Here the stations share the bandwidth of the network. That means the total of 10 Mbps will be shared amongst the 10 stations. So if only one station has frames to send, that means it will benefit from the total capacity that is 10 Mbps. But if more than one station needs to use the network, then the capacity is shared. Let's see for example, if two stations have a lot of frames to send, then uh, they would probably alternate in usage. That means when one station is sending, the other one will refrain from sending. But um, in the second picture, that is uh, the bridge Ethernet, here what happens is a bridge divides the network into two or more networks. So, for example, uh, if a network has 12 stations, then it is divided into two networks, then the number of stations will come down to only 6. Now, uh, each network has a capacity of 10 Mbps. So, this 10 Mbps capacity in each segment will now be shared between 6 stations. Or, we can see that uh, 7 stations because uh, each uh, bridge is also considered as a 1 station. So, uh, here, uh, each uh, station will be offered um, a total capacity, a bandwidth capacity of uh, 10 uh, divided by 7 instead of 10 divided by 12. Here, uh, in the first one, in the first picture, the, the standard Ethernet, uh, uh, these stations, there are 12 stations. So, the total bandwidth capacity of 10 Mbps will be shared by all these 10 stations I mean 12 stations so uh, it will be uh, 10 divided by 12 but in the second one with a bridge since it is divided into 6 6 and uh, with the bridge it will come to 7 stations so the total bandwidth of the standard Ethernet that is 10 Mbps will be shared 
by the seven stations instead of 12. Here, the other purpose uh, is to separate collision domains. The collision domain here becomes much smaller and the probability of collision is also reduced tremendously. Here, um, without bridge, uh, bridging in the, first, uh, in the first picture, 12 stations contend or fight for access to the medium but with bridging, only three stations will compete for the access to the medium. The second one is switched Ethernet. In a bridge, in a bridge uh, network, uh, we can see that uh, the port can either be two or four. Here, uh, in this particular picture, we have uh, four ports of uh, ports in the bridge, but here we have two ports in a bridge. But uh, in a switch uh, Ethernet, uh, we can see that uh, the idea of a bridge LAN can be extended to a switch LAN. Uh, in other words, uh, we can have a n number of ports in a switch Ethernet. So, in a uh, switch Ethernet, the bandwidth is shared only between the station and the switch. And also, the collision domain can also be divided into and domains as we see in the picture. And the third one, we have the full duplex Ethernet. The next step in the evolution uh, is to move from switch Ethernet to full duplex switch Ethernet. The full duplex mode increases the capacity of each domain from 10 to 20 Mbps. A switch Ethernet in full <coughs> uh, duplex, uh, this means that uh, the transmission can be uh, from both sides, that is, uh, one to transmit and one to receive simultaneously. In the switch Ethernet, uh, we, we don't have this uh, option because uh, the communication can be only half duplex and not full full duplex so this means that each station or switch can send and receive independently without worrying about collision and its link is a point-to-point -point dedicated part between the station and the switch. And in this uh, type of connection, there is no longer a need for carrier sensing, which also means that there is no longer a need for collision detection. That's why uh, in this type of connection, the carrier sensing and collision detection functionalities of the MSC sublayer can be turned off. Let's see the MSC control layer in a standard Ethernet. The standard Ethernet it was uh, designed as a connectionless protocol at the MSC sublayer. Sub so there is no explicit flow control or error control to inform the sender that the frame has arrived at the destination without error. That's why when the receiver receives the frame, it does not send any positive or negative acknowledgement. So in order to provide for this flow and error control in full duplex switched Ethernet, a new sublayer called the MAC control is added between the logical link control sublayer and the 
MAC Sapnir.